No fewer than 30 Batman movies have been released over the years, and some are a lot better than the others. And you might be surprised at what critics thought about the Ninja Turtles crossover. This is every Batman movie ever ranked by Rotten Tomatoes. Coming in dead last place with a 12% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, Batman and Robin is the critics' choice for worst Batman movie ever. Featuring an all-star cast led by George Clooney, Batman and Robin could easily have been a success. Sadly, the hackneyed dialogue and wooden performances drag things down and then some. No sign of the snowman. Maybe he melted. Some actors fare better than others in the movie. Uma Thurman is fabulous as Poison Ivy, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is clearly committed to his groan-worthy puns. Despite their best efforts, however, Batman and Robin still falls flat on its face. Behold, the steaming pile of Bat Guano, better known as Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, which holds a measly 29% score on Rotten Tomatoes. The main draw with this movie, of course, is getting to see Batman and Superman knock seven bells out of each other. And the problem here wasn't that fans didn't want to see their heroes fight and go toe to toe. After all, heavy hitter matchups are a cherished tradition in the world of superheroes. But Batman vs Superman sends away all the tension and cultural commentary that makes gritty takes on Batman work so well while sucking all the fun out of its headlining match at the same time. Talk about a misfire. With a 36% score on Rotten Tomatoes, it's clear that the animated adaptation of The Killing Joke just isn't worth your time. Sure, it's a lot of fun seeing some of the most iconic moments from the comic book brought to life, but the rest of the film simply doesn't measure up. Perhaps most notably, the Batgirl subplot is totally unnecessary, inconsequential to the plot, and detracts from the point of the original story. While there's a lot of fan debate about whether or not there should even have been a romance between Batman and Batgirl, most will agree that it was handled very poorly in this movie. Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill are incredible as always, of course, but even their vocal talents aren't enough to fix this broken adaptation. Just because you throw a group of famous actors together doesn't actually mean you'll end up with a good movie. Want proof? Try Justice League. Batman particularly suffers in Justice League. He's boring, arrogant, and so painfully one-dimensional, you can't help but wonder why he's been invited to join the team at all. But Batman isn't the only problem here, as the movie is, at times, almost unforgivably dull. Brief moments of promise emerge, alongside some genuine humor such as Aquaman's run-in with the Lasso of Truth. Maybe I'm scared because I'm meant to... This scene in particular recalls Joss Whedon's superior projects such as The Avengers or Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Sadly though, this is neither of those properties. This is Justice League, and it has earned a frankly generous 39% on Rotten Tomatoes. Joel Schumacher's first Batman film fares only a little better than his second, with Batman Forever coming in at 40% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's worth remembering though that just because this movie is better than Batman and Robin, does not mean it's actually good. Now, Jim Carrey's Riddler is genuinely great. Like Thurman's Poison Ivy, the character is decadently hammy and totally at home within the cartoonish environments of Schumacher's Batverse. Virtually every other performance, however, is either tired or forced. Chris O'Donnell's overwhite earnestness is quickly just too sweet, and Nicole Kidman's one-note Dr. Chase Meridian does little more than spout meaningless psychobabble. Worse still, the movie is an overlong slog, insisting upon a fun aesthetic while not featuring any, you know, fun. The first return to the animation style of the new Batman adventures in nearly two decades, Batman and Harley Quinn is, well, to be honest, it's pretty bad. Holding a 45% on Rotten Tomatoes, this movie has been deemed rotten for a reason. Of course, Kevin Conroy and Lauren Lester give incredible, as always, performances as Batman and Nightwing, and seeing Harley Quinn in her iconic outfit is pretty grand, but even that can't stop this feature from being a total train wreck. Whether it's just the messy tone, the bad jokes, or the gross over-sexualization that does it, something is wrong with Batman and Harley Quinn. And sadly, the nostalgia alone won't save this one in the end. Whether you love or hate Harley Quinn, there's no doubt that this movie offers one of the worst takes of the character. Batman Mystery of the Batwoman is just as good as it is bad. With a 60% on the tomato meter, this animated series continuation is a real mixed bag. The good? Well, the mystery behind the identity of Batwoman is pretty interesting, and Bruce's struggle to maintain balance in Gotham feels like classic Batman. Where it all gets a little iffy is some of Bruce's own characterization which leans particularly heavily into the playboy aspect of his personality. 
And then there's the fact that Mystery of the Batwoman just isn't all that special. In fact, it feels more like a standard episode of the new Batman adventures than a standalone picture. And while the plot does get interesting in places, it also drags a bit too long too. All in all, it could be worse, but it could be better too. A direct adaptation of the famous Batman and Son story arc by Grant Morrison, Son of Batman introduces Batman's newest Robin, his biological son, Damian Wayne. Holding a steady 64% on Rotten Tomatoes, this one is also something of a mixed bag. While there's an interesting dynamic to be found between Bruce and Damian, the plot can feel a bit rushed and even forced at times. While the film's immediate sequel, Batman vs. Robin, is very clearly the better of the two, Son of Batman lays much of the groundwork needed to make the second part and the superb third installment so interesting. It's also true that Jason O'Mara's Batman takes a little getting used to here, especially if you're a Kevin Conroy fan, but he'll probably grow on you before the credits roll. While Joaquin Phoenix's take on the character has been praised by critics and the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, Joker only received a 68% on Rotten Tomatoes. Whether you agree with that rating or not, you can probably at least admit that this was something of an odd Joker story. Most notably, Arthur Fleck is portrayed as a surprisingly pathetic character. If you're a Batman fan who loves the Joker because he's witty, funny, and deadly, then Joker is not the movie for you. you there's also not much Batman-related material here at all, other than a few brief references to Gotham's corruption, the involvement of Thomas Wayne, and a strange interaction between Arthur and young Bruce Wayne. Joker clearly has a lot going for it, but if you went into this movie expecting the definitive portrayal of the Clown Prince of Crime, then there's a good chance you came out feeling disappointed. Thanks to a passionate and devoted fan campaign, Warner Brothers greenlit the completion and release of Zack Snyder's original Justice League movie. And with a 71% rating on the tomato meter, many fans were overjoyed with the results. Rather than making the Dark Knight out to be a cartoonish caricature, Zack Snyder's Justice League allows Batman to shine as the de facto leader of the Justice League. As Common Sense Media put it, the pacing feels like it's telling more of a complete story, and this results in a more watchable, engaging, and polished production. If Whedon's version of the film turned you off the idea of superhero team-ups, give Zack Snyder's Justice League a chance. It might just put you back on track. Tim Burton's Batman scores a well-earned 72% on the tomato meter, making it the first fresh Batman movie on the list. Tim Burton's outsider aesthetic completely revamped the character. Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne is brooding and traumatized, his eyes beneath the mask ever soulful as he works to avenge the deaths of his parents. The age of Adam West was ended by this portrayal, kicking off the era of the Caped Crusader. What really sets Burton's Batman apart from the others, though, is its killer music. Danny Elfman's orchestral score would become iconic, and Prince's delightful soundtrack ended up going double platinum. Batman revitalized the character, gave the world Bat Dance, and reminded us all to never rub another man's rhubarb. What more could a fan ask for? A wholly different take on the Batman you know and love, Batman Gotham by Gaslight currently holds a 75% on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's easy to see why. Based on the popular Elseworlds story of the same name, Gotham by Gaslight is set in turn of the 20th century Gotham and follows a steampunk Batman as he attempts to end Jack the Ripper's killing spree. This is certainly a different Gotham than the one you'll be used to, filled with Victorian-era architecture, costuming, and societal norms. And as Batman and Selina Kyle team up to defeat the mysterious Ripper, the movie is given the chance to show off its beautiful animation, well-written dialogue, and fascinating world-building. If there's any other crime to note here, it's that Gotham by Gaslight isn't rated any higher. Many fans have remarked that the Arkham games are some of the best Batman adaptations out there, and it's honestly hard to disagree. An interesting addition to this video game universe is Batman Assault on Arkham, which manages to concoct a blend between a Batman movie and a Suicide Squad movie. With a 75% on the tomato meter, this one is great for diehard fans of Arkham and Task Force X alike. Set after Arkham Origins, but before Arkham Asylum, Assault on Arkham reunites Kevin Conroy's Batman with Troy Baker's Joker, as well as a host of other classic Gotham characters. The premise is simple, yet effective too. As Task Force X is sent to break into Arkham, Batman attempts to stop them. And while it may not be the best animated Batman movie out there, Assault on Arkham does do wonders for the Suicide Squad, and it's a heck of a lot better than whatever this was. So that's it? What, are we some kind of... Suicide Squad. Oh, speaking of that Suicide Squad, we're not really counting that as a Batman movie per se, but 
since Bats does appear in it, and to save you from blasting us in the comments, the 2016 Suicide Squad has a 26% score on Rotten Tomatoes. There, saved you a comment. Originally meant to be a tie-in between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight, Batman Gotham Knight is a collection of six different animated shorts that each tell a different Batman-centered tale. With a 75% on Rotten Tomatoes, Gotham Knight is clearly visually stunning. While most animated features retain the same animation style throughout, Gotham Knight takes each story very seriously, switching up the animation style for each segment. Each story is just as compelling as the last two. If anthologies aren't really your thing or switching between multiple animation styles might bother you, then this will probably seem like an easy pass. In truth though, Gotham Knight is a must-see for all Bat fans out there, regardless of what the tomato meter says. An interactive, spiritual sequel to Batman Under the Red Hood, Batman Death in the Family is the only Batman film of its kind, giving the audience the same choice that comic book readers had in the late 1980s, to either save or kill the second Robin, aka Jason Todd. With a 75% on the tomato meter, Death in the Family provides the audience with three different paths. Robin dies, like the events of Under the Red Hood, Robin cheats death, where Todd becomes a murderous vigilante similar to Hush, or Batman saves Robin. The final option in which Todd adopts the Red Robin moniker gives viewers the opportunity to either take revenge on the Joker or honor Batman's dying wishes not to, each with their own respective paths. Like Under the Red Hood, Batman is once again voiced by Bruce Greenwood, one of the most underrated Batman actors, and the Joker is played perfectly by John DiMaggio. But sadly, Jensen Ackles doesn't reprise his role as Jason Todd here. Regardless, if you're looking for a unique Batman movie experience unlike any other, then check out Batman Death in the Family. Holy first movie, Batman! Catapulting off the success of the boisterous Batman TV show, the dynamic duo arrived onto the big screen in the best way possible. Adam West's definitive Batventure, Batman the Movie, lands a 79% fresh score on Rotten Tomatoes. The movie's attitude towards superheroes is miles away from today's serious-minded cape and cowl stories, of course, but there is still an enormous amount of fun to be had in this cartoonish and colorful universe. After all, superheroes are flexible creations designed to change with the times. And if Batman can be the armored jerk of Batman vs Superman, he can certainly be a groovy 1960s swinger, too. Tim Burton's Batman Returns doesn't just impress, it manages to surpass its era-defining 1989 predecessor in almost every way. The critic score sits at 80%. Deepening and darkening Burton's original neo-noir vision, the villains of Batman Returns are its greatest strength. The Penguin, played by a delightfully disgusting Danny DeVito, and Catwoman, delivered with manic panache by Michelle Pfeiffer, are all-star additions to Batman's rogues gallery. Mistletoe can be deadly if you eat it. Mm, but a kiss can be even deadlier if you mean it. If anything, Michael Keaton's Batman is the side dish in this glorious feast of villainy. That's not to say he isn't superb, though. In Batman Returns, Keaton summons the riveting depth he brought to the original Burton film, easily securing his place as one of the best Batman actors of all time. With an 82% score on Rotten Tomatoes, Batman Ninja is by far the strangest of the Batman animated movies. After Gorilla Grodd accidentally sends Batman and his rogues gallery back in time to medieval Japan, the Dark Knight must fight to survive this new landscape. This one definitely gets points for being one of the most original Batman tales out there. As IGN puts it, DC tried something new by bringing in visionary Japanese animators to offer a refreshing take on one of the company's most beloved characters. And the finished product not only built upon the great adaptations that have come before, but surpassed them. Certified fresh at 84% on Rotten Tomatoes, Batman Begins follows Batman in his youth as he journeys from shattered childhood to hardened legendary icon. In this movie, he's still searching the world for answers, on a path that will eventually lead him back to Gotham as an entirely different man. He isn't the Dark Knight just yet, but he's getting there. The film is equal parts style, emotion, and terror, not least thanks to a compelling turn by Killian Murphy as the Scarecrow. Batman Begins is exactly what it had to be in order to pull off the lofty aims Christopher Nolan had in mind. A decisive mission statement about Batman and the world he inhabits. Audiences embraced it, of course, kicking off a glorious new age for the caped crusader. 
Batman Mask of the Phantasm has a solid 85% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. No surprise either, given that it's a sequel to the beloved Batman the Animated Series. This story follows Batman as he tracks down a mysterious killer who is hell-bent on murdering mob bosses. In fact, this story marks the debut and definitive story for the now iconic villain, Phantasm. Between Beyond That, the stellar animation, powerful score, and twisty plot means that Mask of the Phantasm has more than earned its place as one of the best Batman films ever made. Coming in with an 85% on the tomato meter, The Batman is The Dark Knight's most recent bout on the big screen. Directed by Matt Reeves, this gritty detective crime drama is everything you could ask for in a Batman movie. I'm vengeance. The story finds a fledgling Batman working with Detective James Gordon to track down the Riddler before he can plunge Gotham into chaos. Along the way, the Dark Knight must come to terms with his own identity as a vigilante and decide whether or not vengeance is worth living for. Robert Pattinson's portrayal of Batman is magnificent, of course, and the movie also wins points for its superb villains and incredible visual palette. No wonder fans are desperate for more. The Dark Knight Rises lands near the top of the Batman heap with an 87% certified fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. This concluding chapter of Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy is as dark as it is epic, following the masked villain Bane as he attempts to liberate Gotham from corporate raiders like Bruce Wayne. Of course, he decides the best way to do this is by blowing everything up. Curiously enough, this movie is at its best during its quieter, more contemplative moments. Talia's traumatic childhood and subsequent escape from the pit, Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle's first meeting, Bruce's struggle to escape his underground prison. These scenes are a lot less flashy than some of the bigger set pieces, but they linger on long after the film ends. Based on the classic Frank Miller origin story of the same name, Batman Year One is as direct an adaptation as you could ask for. With an 88% on Rotten Tomatoes, this animated feature follows Batman during his first nights out patrolling Gotham. Meanwhile, a young GCPD cop named Lieutenant Jim Gordon begins to learn the truth about the city's deep-seated corruption. Like some of the best Batman stories, Year One strips its hero down to the bare essentials and pits him against Gotham's seediest criminal organizations. The voice this cast is worthy of particular note in year one, led by Gotham star Ben McKenzie as Batman and Brian Cranston as Jim Gordon. Even better, the animation and the narrative in year one do that superb cast justice, and then some. Based on the famed Batman comic book of the same name, Batman Hush is an interesting adaptation of the original material that forces itself to fit in the pre-established DC Universe animated original movies universe. And it works pretty well. With an 88% on Rotten Tomatoes, Hush is certainly more loved than hated, even if it makes some substantial changes to Jeff Loeb's original source material. Some that work, and some that don't. Like the view? It's the only thing you'll catch tonight. As a direct sequel to fan favorite Batman Bad Blood, with Jason O'Mara returning to voice the Caped Crusader. Hush is Bruce Wayne's official return to the cowl and better establishes the will they won't they relationship between the Dark Knight and Catwoman. While not as excellent as the comic book it's based upon, Batman Hush does its best to subvert expectations and tell a story that, while it may feel similar, is original to the world it inhabits. We've got to give them points for that. Recent years have seen Batman and his world grow darker and darker as creators strive to make the character more realistic. But the Lego Batman movie embraces the Dark Knight's sillier side with all its heart. Does it pull this off? Well, take a look at its 90% Rotten Tomato score. This isn't just a good Batman movie. It's one of the best theatrical Batman movies ever made. What is the password? Iron Man sucks. Thank you. A cavalcade of characters burst forth from the movie's animation, originating from inside and outside the Batverse. Indeed, the Lego Batman movie could easily have become overstuffed. But instead, the huge cast of characters turns the film into a raucous celebration of pop culture far and wide. You're just as likely to find Batman on a kid's pajamas as you are to find him brooding in the rain. And the Lego Batman movie knows this better than any other Batman movie. When you think of a late 90s Batman movie featuring Mr. Freeze, your mind probably goes to this. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! 
Thankfully though, Batman and Robin wasn't the only bat flick to pit Gotham's coldest villain against the world's greatest detective. And since Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero holds a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes, you can safely assume that it wasn't nearly the worst either. Unlike Batman and Robin, Sub-Zero really gets to the heart of Mr. Freeze's bizarre and tragic story, and Michael Ansara's portrayal of Victor Freeze is both frightening and compelling. Sub-Zero sometimes gets a bit of a bad rap compared to Batman's other animated adventures, but in truth, it's got everything you could ask for from a Batman film. The stakes are high, the action is exciting, and the final climax is outright epic. Cool party! <laughs> Do you like both The Dark Knight Detective and Bruce Lee-style 1970s kung fu movies? Then Batman's Soul of the Dragon is the animated motion picture for you. With an amazing cast, a vibrant story, and a unique take on the DC Universe, Soul of the Dragon is something of a love letter to the kind of martial arts films we hardly see nowadays, and it gets everything right. Having earned a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes, this film unites Batman with his former peers, Bronze Tiger, Richard Dragon, and Lady Shiva, as they come together to battle dark forces unleashed by Cobra. Unlike most Batman films that have some clear-cut closure, Soul of the Dragon ends with the hopeful promise that there's more out there after the credits roll, and remind us that Batman is truly one of the most selfless heroes. It's also just a really fun movie with lots of martial arts action to keep you entertained for an hour and a half. With a Rotten Tomato score of 94%, The Dark Knight ranks as the highest rated live action Batman movie of all time. How does it accomplish this? You probably already know. Heath Ledger's phenomenal performance as the Joker. Here, Batman is overshadowed by Ledger's iconic, Oscar winning turn as the arch villain who steals the scene every time he appears. Let's put a smile on that face. Christopher Nolan can also thank Maggie Gyllenhaal and Aaron Eckhart for the movie's success, who both provide sterling support and manage to pull off their own stirring emotional arcs. And beneath it all, there's Bale's Batman, the stoic foundation to the trilogy faced with evil the likes of which he's never seen before. It is a grand sort of movie, with huge ambitions, elaborate action sequences, and portentous dialogue. The fact that it pulls this all off with such poise doesn't just make it great, it makes it the very best there is. After nearly 60 years since their Batman series aired on television, Batman Return of the Caped Crusaders saw, well, the return of the 1960s incarnation of the dynamic duo played by Adam West and Burt Ward. While not a live-action romp, this animated movie reunited the actors with Julie Newmar as Catwoman to fight crime in Gotham City once more. With a whopping 94% on the tomato meter, Return of the Caped Crusaders is everything Batman fans have ever dreamed of since the series ended back in the 60s. With an authentic animation style that does total justice to the original series, and a cast of stellar vocal talents, we're grateful that these two TV Land legends got back together, especially to face off against their most heinous foes. With all the pows, zaps, and whams you could ask for, Batman Return of the Caped Crusaders is an animated triumph and a touching tribute to a bygone era of superhero television. Earning a 100% score on Rotten Tomatoes, Batman The Dark Knight Returns is probably the best Batman two-parter there ever was. Based on the Frank Miller classic of the same name, both parts of this animated feature feel like they've been ripped directly from the pages of the original comic book. Generally regarded to be one of the greatest Batman stories ever written, it's little wonder that the Dark Knight Returns animated adaptation was so well received. Unlike The Killing Joke, this one doesn't take as many liberties with the source material. In particular, the fight sequence between Batman and Superman is incredible, as is the brawl between Batman and the mutant leader. The real highlight, however, is the dynamic between Batman and his new Robin, Carrie Kelly, who brings a much-needed sense of levity and flair to this story. Also earning a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes is Batman Under the Red Hood. Retelling the story of how Batman lost his second Robin, Jason Todd, this heartbreaking tale pits Batman against his former protege as the Red Hood wages war against Gotham's criminals. As the body count racks up, Batman is forced to decide whether he'll go along with the Red Hood's killing spree or whether he'll attempt to stop him. 
If anti-heroes are your thing, then this is the Batman movie for you. Don't think twice about seeing Under the Hood. This movie exceeds all expectations, and you could easily argue that it outshines the comic book on which it's based. More than anything, Jensen Ackles was born to play Jason Todd, an anti-hero with an attitude that gives him more than enough range to work with. If you came for Batman, you'll stay for the Red Hood. With a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, Batman Bad Blood is an original story loosely based on Grant Morrison's take on Batman. It follows the Bat family as they attempt to take down an evil clone of Robin known as the Heretic. What makes this film unique is that it stars Dick Grayson as the caped crusader in Bruce Wayne's absence, marking the first time Grayson has been portrayed as Batman in a movie. In his review of Bad Blood, Isle Street's Mike McGranahan wrote, So much is made of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but what DC is doing with these animated features is much more organic. If nothing else though, Bad Blood is tangible proof that you can tell an exciting and original Batman story without needing to stick directly to the source material. Another production scoring an impressive 100% rating on the tomato meter, Batman vs. Robin is the thrilling precursor to Batman Bad Blood. An installment of the DC original animated movie verse, this film is primarily an adaptation of the Court of Owls storyline, which deals with a shadowy secret society that has long kept its talons hooked into Gotham City. After a new vigilante named Talon rears his hidden head, it becomes clear that he wants to co-op Robin to his side and take him on as a protege. Hey, ain't you the Batman's brat? Oh! Not anymore. The Court of Owls story is one of the best in recent Batman history, and Batman vs. Robin does it total justice, even if it shakes up a few details along the way. Critic Jeffrey Lies has suggested that the movie stands alongside the best efforts of Warner Brothers Animated, and honestly, it's hard to argue otherwise. While not exactly a direct adaptation of the iconic Batman story of the same name, Batman The Long Halloween will entertain both new and longtime fans as they try to solve the mystery of the Holiday Killer. With a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, each installment of this feature film two-parter is as engaging as the last, and contains just about everything we love about The Dark Knight. Speaking of, if The Long Halloween feels a bit like Nolan's second critically acclaimed Batman feature, then you're spot on. Both The Dark Knight and The Long Halloween used elements of the same Batman story to construct their iconic crime narratives, and both do it exceptionally well. Jensen Ackles, known best for his work on Supernatural and for voicing Jason Todd in Batman Under the Red Hood, plays Batman here to perfection, and is clearly the right choice for the role post-Kevin Conroy and Jason O'Mara. Didn't know there was a mashup of Batman and TMNT? Well, if you 90s kids out there had been holding out for a crossover between two of your favorite Saturday morning action heroes, then look no further than Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. With a tomato meter score of 100%, watching Batman, Robin, and Batgirl team up alongside Raphael, Leonardo, Donatello, and Michelangelo is everything we could ever hope for, and just as deliciously ridiculous as you could imagine. Ninja Turtles. As Ra's al Ghul and Shredder unite to cleanse Gotham, the Bat Family and the Turtles are forced to come together to defeat all of Batman's biggest rogues as well as the Foot Clan who are aiding the villains. The tension between the Dark Knight and the TMNT is certainly felt at the beginning, but by the film's end, we're holding out hope for a sequel and wondering why we didn't get this crossover sooner. The animated sequel to Batman Return of the Caped Crusaders, which is itself a sequel to the original 1960s Batman series, Batman vs. Two-Face is everything we could ever hope for from an Adam West Batman story. Naturally, this cheese fest earned itself a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, and that's in large part due to the addition of William Shatner as Harvey Dent aka Two-Face. Adding Shatner to the 60s Batman saga is an inspired casting choice, and one that we're almost upset didn't occur back when the series was airing on television. As West's Batman battles for the soul of Shatner's dent, it's sad to reflect on this being West and Ward's final performances as the Caped Crusaders. Thankfully, Batman vs. Two-Face is an excellent swan song to these 60s heroes, leaving little else to be desired. If you're a fan of a more comedic take on Batman, or loved the original 60s series, this one is a must-watch for you. With 100% on the tomato meter, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker is the send-off feature film for the beloved animated series Batman Beyond. 
As an elderly Bruce Wayne and Terry McGinnis deal with the resurrection of the long-thought-dead clown prince of crime, Terry slowly discovers why all the other members of the Bat family left Bruce over the years. Fans of the Batman Beyond animated series will love this one, but even if you've never seen a single episode of the cartoon, there's still a lot to love. Between the movie's compelling flashback sequences to the final confrontation between Terry's Batman and the reborn Joker, there's plenty of action and excitement to get to grips with. Don't forget, though, that there are two versions of this movie out there. You'll need to track down the original uncut version for the definitive Batman Beyond experience. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.